Hello and welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about desktop environments and window managers and explaining the difference between the two. And I'm going to do this kind of as a response to a video that Andrea Borman made during the week. And now Andrea looked at um, a number of different window managers, including Openbox, Ice Window Manager, Fluxbox. And she didn't get the fuss about why YouTubers are recommending uh, or using window managers over something like a fully fledged desktop environment. Now, the benefits of a desktop environment are plain to see. Um, you've got the desktop wallpaper, you've got the um, panels with the icons on it, you've got a nice menu. And uh, if I want to put something onto the desktop, I can. So I can right click and do add to desktop. And you can see um, a desktop environment gives you quite a lot of goodies so to start off with let's talk about what a desktop environment is a desktop environment is a number of different components put together to make it what it is so uh, this is KDE and KDE actually has its own window manager called I think it's called Kwin and it has this panel down here called Kpanel so it's not like a desktop environment doesn't have a window manager. Uh, it just it has more than just the window manager. So in this case, uh, KDE has got Kwin, it's got the K panel. It's got, uh, I guess this is a K menu. I'm not sure what it's called. And you've got the system tray icons uh, and you've got the Dolphin file manager that generally comes with KDE. And you've seen I've put an icon on the desktop and it's easy to do that and uh, it's easy to move windows around and you can drag them and you can open something else over the top so for instance vlc i can open that up and i can have it full screen i can drag it around i can drag this one over here and this is all part of the desktop environment experience so there's so much you can do with a standard desktop environment now, what Andrea did um, in her video was she went to Openbox. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to show you what you get with Openbox. So here we are in the Openbox window manager, and you can see there is absolutely nothing on this screen at all. So if I want to run an application, I can right click the menu and I can go through the menus here. Now, as Andrea rightly pointed out, not everything that you've got installed on your computer is available in these menus. In fact, if you've got flat packs installed, they're not available at all. So you can't run, uh, you can't easily run them. So what you can do is you can open up a console app and you can run an application from here. So if I wanted to run Dolphin, I can run Dolphin and I can run it like this. Or if I put the ampersand at the end, I can run it in background mode like that. Um, and that's how you can run an application. But Andrea rightly pointed out that this has not got any benefits over using a desktop environment. And the people that would use something like Openbox are probably going to expand on just Openbox itself. So Openbox is just the window manager. All it's responsible for is managing these windows on the screen. It has no other care, it has no other duty, it doesn't need to do anything else. That is what Openbox is designed to do. Manage these windows on the screen. It's not responsible for storing icons on the desktop, it's not responsible for a panel, it's not responsible for a menu, and in fact Kwin is also the same on KDE. So open box is just the window manager and it's responsible for this the fact that you get a menu is actually a bit of a bonus you kind of need the menu otherwise you wouldn't find any way of interacting with open box so what we're going to do is we're going to expand on open box a little bit and we're going to add in a panel so let's do that first so we're going to open up a terminal i'm going to open console you can see i've got a number of different um, terminals installed i'm going to open up console which is the one that comes with KDE. I'm going to make the font larger so that you can see what is going on. And I think what we'll install is the Mate panel. Now 
Uh, and the one thing you'll notice is I don't actually have an internet connection. So even my network manager hasn't been picked up whilst running Openbox. And we're going to type sudo system control enable network manager dot service like that. Let's use a command called nm -tui. and we can click activate a connection and we can click on our Wi-Fi and it's asking for a password and you can see that's connected and go back and quit and then we can ping Google and you see we've now got an internet connection. So NM2E enables you to connect to Wi-Fi from the command line. And I will install Mate Panel. And that's uh, Mate Panel installed. And what we're going to do is we're going to configure our open box. So we go into dot config. See the open box. box folder if it's not there we'll cd into that So you can see this is the default auto start, which is in etc xdg open box. So what we're going to do is go back to our config folder, and instead of creating a open box, we're going to go into open box, and we're going to sudo copy etc xdg open box auto start like that and now we've got an auto start file so now we can do nano auto start and what we need to do now is type mate panel place ampersand and what the replace does, if there's already a panel running, it will make Marte panel the only panel running. And the ampersand runs it in the background, so it other commands can run afterwards. So it's control load save. And then and I should have sudoed that in the first place. it out there and now we need to reload the open box configuration and you can see what I did was I actually ended up logging out and logging back in and now you can see I've got a Mate panel and I've got a standard Mate menu up here so we're instantly a bit better off than we were before we've got places and we've got a system so quite quickly you can get to a point where you've got a panel working and now you've got your window manager So what about the desktop situation? You can see there's not much here on the desktop. Now, one of the things you can actually install to manage your wallpaper and your desktop icons is PC Man FM. So we're going to install that next. So we've still got the right click menu. I'm just going to go back to the terminals again. And I'm going to go to console like that. And we are going to install PC Man FM. So sudo pacman minus s pc man fm like that. And what we're going to do is 
go into our config folder, open box, sudo nano auto start again, and down here, all we have to do is PC man fm hyphen hyphen desktop ampersand like that, and we should be able to restart our window manager. So here we are back in again. I logged out and logged back in again, and you can see now we have a desktop, and I've managed to store an icon on the desktop, and it's easy to do. I can go to any one of these, and I can right-click and add this launcher to the desktop, and I can also add it to the panel if I want to. So because this is a Marty panel, I can do all the things with Marty that I can normally do. So. You can move this to the bottom, the top, you can change the sizes. And I've got a full guide showing how you can customize the Marte panel. Now, the desktop wallpaper, we can go to desktop preferences and we can change this now. Go and find one of my wallpapers. And there we have it. We now have a fairly usable interface. So Andrea is right. If you just want an open box on its own, then it's not very useful. But you can see within just a handful of commands, you can get it to a point where you've got a panel, a menu, you've got the ability to store things on the desktop and run things as normal. Now, the point of things like open box is that it makes it highly configurable for the user so they can install as much or as little as they want. And you can see I'm only actually using like 660 megabytes. Now it's going up because I'm obviously recording video, but um, using something like Openbox uses a lot less resources than something like KDE, which is probably going to be about the 1.3, 1.4 gigabytes without actually even running anything on top of it. So um, the purpose of running just a window manager is you can make it configurable as and use so I've used Marty panel here I could easily have used LX panel which is the one from LXQT I could use XF panel I think it is the one for XFCE um, you can use any panel you want you can use I've used PCF PC man FM here for changing the desktop wallpaper and storing icons on the desktop I could have used Nemo I could have used um, Faye, which is FEH, um, just to show a desktop wallpaper if I didn't care about icons on the desktop. So um, from that point of view, you can make your system work with minimal resources or as many apps as you want, and you can configure it to make your own desktop environment by using a window manager like Openbox. So here we are in the other kind of window manager, which is a tiling window manager. And this is one that Andrea didn't talk about in her video and the beauty of a tiling window manager is that the window tile side by side whereas in the something like open box um, you have to drag the windows from side to side uh, and they cover over each other but um, so as an example of how a tiling window manager works if I open a terminal you can see it opens full screen and if I open a file manager instantly takes up the space and if I then open up Chrome you can see Chrome opens up side by side and I can move these things around like that and I can move them around and if I want to put um, Chrome on another workspace I, I can do that So Chrome is now on its own workspace. And so tiling window managers are great because they're keyboard driven and because of the tiling nature um, it's a lot easier. Like if you're trying to follow a set of instructions down the right hand side and type them in or copy and paste them into the left hand side, it's easier to read through and copy and paste like that. And a tiling window manager can open up as many of these workspaces as you like. And it's a really nice workflow, especially if you're quite technical in nature if you're a programmer these sort of things um, are actually really really good um, but 
uh, yes, a tiling window manager, uh, Andrea didn't include that kind of window manager. And these are the ones that uh, a lot of the YouTubers you're seeing are actually using. So people like Linux Mensch and um, Chris Titus and stuff, uh, they're using these sort of tiling window managers. Now, the one I'm using here is Sway. I know um, Linux Mensch uses Awesome Window Manager, sometimes uses um, DWM but uh, they all work in a very similar way. To sum up this video, for the majority of users, you're going to want to use a desktop environment such as KDE, Mate, Cinnamon, Gnome, uh, and LXQT, XFCE, because they come with the panel, they come with the menus, they come with the ability to save things onto the desktop, and they're already fully set up for you. So if you just want ease of use, then a desktop environment is where you want to go. If you want to have a similar environment to um, a normal um, desktop environment, but you want to build it yourself with your own panel, your own um, menu system, you can put your own um, thing for managing wallpapers and stuff like that, then using something like Openbox um, enables you to do that. If you want a more keyboard driven, lightweight version of Linux that you can have these tiling windows and you can customize and everything's more keyboard driven then something like a tiling window manager would work for you and that is the end of the video i hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and i'll see you next time on everyday linux user